thankful for the blessing of being together in community. We hold all these joys, sorrows, and concerns in our hearts. Let us sing together, draw the circle wide. Our reading this morning is a responsive one. And I'm going to turn on my screen share again. This is your line, except for the last line is a little longer. I'll put it up there when it's time. But when I pause, will you join in uh, following Linda Clark in saying your line. This is reading number 512 in our hymnal, We Give Thanks This Day, written by O. Eugene Pickett. For the expanding grandeur of creation, worlds known and unknown, galaxies beyond galaxies, filling us with awe and challenging our imaginations. We give thanks this day. For this fragile planet Earth, its times and tides, its sunsets and seasons. We give thanks this day. For the joy of human life, its wonders and surprises, its hopes and achievements. We give thanks this day. For our human community, our common past and future hope, our oneness transcending all separation, our capacity to work for peace and justice in the midst of hostility and oppression. We give, we give thanks, thanks this day for high hopes and noble causes, for faith without fanaticism, for understanding of views not shared. Thanks this day for all who have labored and suffered for a fairer world, who have lived so that others might live in dignity and freedom. We give thanks this day for human liberty and sacred rights, for opportunities to change and grow, to affirm and choose. We give thanks this day. We pray that we may live not by our fears, but by our hopes, not by our words, but by our deeds. Our anthem this morning is Simple Gifts.
And that is one gift that I am so grateful for is the beautiful music that Olga is able to create for us. <sighs> you know, when I was a young mom and had at the time five kids at home, four of them under the age of six and some marriage problems, I went and talked to my bishop and he said, well, you know, <clears throat> you're all healthy. You know, you've got a husband to support you. Count your blessings. And he sent me home. It's simple, right? Yeah, you know, I don't think that's the kind of simplicity that the song's talking about. <clears throat> that's not the kind of gratitude that will set us free. In fact, when I became a minister, I promised myself that I would never use count your blessings in that way as a panacea. Rather, gratitude needs to flow from a deep grounding in reality so that it can serve as a platform for courage and resilience as we look for solutions and needed change. As we live the spiral that reconnects, we do begin from a place of gratitude, yes. But that gratitude becomes deeper and more real, more clear-eyed and supportive when we have gone on to honor our pain, looked at reality in all its awfulness and shining possibilities and stepped forward into new understanding. Then as we spiral round to gratitude once again, we find it to be not an escape or denial, but actually nurturing and healing, laying the foundation for resilience, growth and progress. Earlier in the service, we had a gratitude meditation just sitting and observing the things we have right here and now that we can be grateful for. This laid the foundation for looking at some painful things without feeling that all is lost. 
Rather, we honor our pain and the fact that the pain we feel shows us just how much we care. As UUA President Susan Frederick Gray said in a recent letter to UU ministers, many hearts ache this year as we anticipate Thanksgiving and the winter holidays in the midst of a global pandemic. We know that many plans and treasured traditions for gathering with family and friends must be canceled or put on hold. This year, let us also be mindful that many hearts in the indigenous communities of New England and across Turtle Island ache on Thanksgiving Day every year. In Plymouth, Massachusetts, indigenous people observe the holiday as a day of mourning. This year will mark the 50th anniversary of this day of mourning tradition and the 400th anniversary of the landing of the pilgrims in Plymouth. Did you know that historically UU ministers were instrumental in creating this US holiday of Thanksgiving and the pilgrims and the Indians pageant tradition that roots the holiday in a historically inaccurate and harmful colonial narrative? This tradition caught on strongly in our wider culture, and I expect that some of you remember, as I do, dressing up and acting this myth in school. It can be painful to realize that our national origins include the harsh reality that we treated the people who lived here before us with increasing cruelty that ended in mass genocide over decades. And that does not negate the ideals of freedom and justice that infused the founding of this nation. Expanding these ideals to include more and more people is our ongoing work as you use and people of good faith. Many UU congregations in New England can trace their lineage directly back to early settler congregations that had a role in the genocide of native communities. As a religious tradition, we cannot decide who we, we will be without reckoning with the truth of who some of our ancestors were. In 2016, Unitarian Universalists voted to pay special attention to learning our history and rethinking Thanksgiving this year. If you want to read this resolution, the link is in the chat box, and we'll also post it in the Tuesday newsletter. This resolution led to several years of study, acknowledging the pain of what happened and the effects still being felt today, and consulting with Indigenous leaders to get a more clear-eyed view of the true history of this country, and then Going forth with this new understanding, an action of immediate witness passed this year at General Assembly to address 400 years of white supremacist colonialism. Again, we are sharing the link. This afternoon, I'm planning to attend a UUA Zoom teach-in about four o'clock to learn more about this. In case some of you might want to join me, here is the link to register for this. It doesn't cost anything. And I will be bringing this back to our congregation, all of the things that I learned and making them part of myself as we go forward. Thanksgiving celebrations have a long, and rich history that predate the landing of the pilgrims and the founding of the United States. And I think many, if not most of us in this gathering have found many ways to connect in gratitude and celebrate the abundance of fall harvest as a community without celebrating an ahistorical colonial origin story. This year, let us be grateful in a genuine manner let our gratitude flow from our deep, ongoing commitment to justice and 
equity. Let our gratitude grow from the opportunities we have to be together authentically, whether virtually or in person. Let our gratitude flow from the commitment of our UU faith to reimagine this day and gather in community to honor indigenous ancestors, experiences, and traditions. May it be a time to reflect and find meaning in how our shared values connect us. May we have a safe holiday season, not traveling over the river and through the woods or through the airport or even to the other side of town to grandma's house. Remember that indoor maskless dining with someone from another household is one of the riskier things we can do. This one year out of a lifetime of thanksgivings, let us be safe and do everything we can to live to see another Thanksgiving. Let us instead lift a cup this Thursday to next year in person. May it be so. And now as we come to the end of our service, I leave you with this blessing for an unhurried life. May the tempo of your journey be just right. May you seize the day, but also savor the moment. May your life be the one you live and not just watch passing by. And may you be reacquainted each day with an unhurried universe which is calling you to dive deeply into love. It's so good to be together today.